let's talk. Let's start the show off with a uh, a main topic or just a main storyline that's going around the league right now, and it's it's something I've been noticing since kind of like the beginning of the season, and it's like this team has been having questions since they formed up in the summer. I'm talking about the 76ers, to be exact. Mm-hmm. Um, many of them, like many like people around the league and followers of basketball, questioned how this team was going to hold up in the season with them uh, not signing Jimmy Butler and signing T- Tobias Harris to that max contract, which I don't think he deserves. But get your chicken, man. Um, and signing Al Horford, he got like a hundred something million dollar contract as well. Terrible contract. And they traded for Josh Richardson when they did kind of like a sign and trade deal for Jimmy Butler. Uh, we see like there was questions. The glaring problem when the team formed was like just their shooting. That was the glaring thing we know. Is like, well, they're big, they got good size, but can they shoot? And as the season has progressed, uh, obviously they can't shoot. That's still a major issue for that team. And what's becoming an even bigger issue is just their play style. Uh, with Joel and B kind of wanting to slow him down the pace and kind of like want to post up his players down low and like like I said slow it down. With Ben Simmons, because Joel and B been hurt for most of the season, Ben Simmons play he's been very consistent in his play throughout the season. And he's like in playing fast and transition. Cause Ben Simmons he specializes in transition buckets and he's like just increasing the tempo of that team and they've been playing really well when he does that. So. That's been kind of the main problem going on. The 76ers did beat the Nets last night without Kyrie, without, and the 76ers did not have uh, Ben Simmons. He was out <coughs> with a uh, lower back tightness after the following All Star weekend. Uh, they beat him 112 to 104. Um, the fans booed Joel and Bead mm-hmm. again, but I think they was in, they might have been affiliated this game when they was in Brooklyn last time I checked. Do you remember? No, they played. Um they played in Philly. They played in Philly again. Yeah, I, I got. I saw the notification say that they booed him again. So obviously yeah. the fans are taking offense to what's going on in Philly right now. So it's not just people that analyze basketball. Like the fans are having enough, and it's crazy too when you think about it. for the many years they endured for the process. That now I I can't understand their frustration because they waited so long, and the years that they had to endure for them to get to where they are right now and to, like, and be told. It. Yeah, being told. for what, second-round exits? Yeah, for first-round exits, maybe. If they play the Heat in the first round, the way the current season sits, they lose that. I, to me, I think they would. Yeah, I would say. I'll take the Heat. You I'll know me? I'm a big Jimmy Butler fan, so. I, you are a big Jimmy Butler fan. I, this he's the guy, very underrated. This is the guy that said that Jimmy Butler deserves to be MVP over Kawhi Leonard. No, see, context so important. <laughs> I said that. Neither one of them is going to win MVP. But if we really broke down a ranking and we just kept going down the list of people, because pretty much once you get out like the top three, because the top three is Giannis, LeBron, and I guess who we say at three? Luka, 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 or, James Luka or James Harden. Luka or James Harden. But pretty much even still, even really, it's really Giannis, LeBron. Everybody else is just in the ranking just right. by, you know, default, because you need a third or fourth guy if you keep going down the list. But I was just saying if you kept going down the list, Jimmy Butler would be higher on that list than Kawhi. In my opinion, that's the only thing I that that's the only thing I was saying. I didn't say he would win MVP. I didn't say he was really a candidate. I didn't say he was going to be a finalist. I didn't say he was better than Kawhi. That is all I said. Context. Go ahead. That's besides the point. That's a, that's a different argument for a different day. But George, I want to toss it to you and kind of get your opinion. Well, let me get into the quote that he said uh, because last night Joel Embiid did finish with thirty nine points and sixteen rebounds. Like I said, granted they did play. The Nets without Kyrie, who's just been injured uh, for the rest of the season. We'll talk about that later. He made a quote following the game, talking about his mindset during All Star Weekend. And the quote goes: "I'm taking it out of context a little bit, but he said, just proving I'm here, I belong, and being the best player in the world, I just intend to keep coming out every single night and just play hard and try to win a championship." Now, with this quote that he said, "Is Joel Embiid the best player in the world?" No. He's not even the best center in the world. Whoa, you don't think he's the best center? No, I'd rather have Jokic, to be honest. Okay, the way the way Jokic's been playing lately, we'll get into that too. But the way he's been playing, I can see that. But I'll just let you, t- I'll toss it to you and I'll go back to my point. But go ahead. Well, my thing is with Joel Embiid is that how can you be the best player in the world when you're not even your best version of you right now? Because yes. when you look at his points, his points have dropped, his rebounds have dropped. Uh, I believe his blocks have dropped. I don't know if his assists have dropped. But yeah. pretty much we look at him in almost every major statistical category. He's averaging, so for the season, he's averaging 23 uh, points with one block. Uh, he has three assists and 12 rebounds versus last season where he averaged almost 28 points. He averaged almost two blocks. 
uh, forces. So assists kind of were around almost close Pretty to forces like and 14 rebounds. So his his numbers did drop this season. He's not even the best version of himself, like you said. Look, that's my thing. And even when he was, you know, that Joel Embiid, nobody was really looking at him and saying, like, oh, this Joel Embiid is really vying for the MVP. Like, he wasn't even a top five finisher last right. year. And again, you're the best player in the world playing with another all-star in Ben Simmons, but then the 76ers aren't even, they don't even have home court advantage right now in an East where the seven seed is under 500. So when I look at that, that doesn't scream best player in the world. And I get he's been injured, and I get that there's a lot of different things going on with that roster and then the coach that go beyond him. But when you tell me you're the best player in the world, I'm expecting better. What are they, the sixth seed right now? The sixth seed in the East? Yeah. I expect better than that. They are sitting at six seed, but they do have the best home record in the league right now. Last time I checked, so if that game, if they, I think they did play in Philly last night, so they, they yeah. now go from being twenty five and two to twenty six and two. Okay, again, they are six seed in the East, which means that they will not have home court advantage in any of the playoffs, and they are a terrible. They're fifth. Team. My fault. They're fifth seed. Fifth, because Indiana six seed, so right. they are okay. fifth seed. So fifth seed, but even still, they're not a top four seed, and I believe they're. A surmountable amount of games out of the four C, like three or four games from what I had seen. Yeah. I think it's uh Toronto or is it Miami that's in that spot right now? Well, in um, the four C? Right. Miami's in that four C right now. Yeah. And I believe Miami's about like uh three to four games ahead of them right now, I think. Yeah, they, no, actually they're tied for games right now, actually looking at it. So I, I just pulled back. it up. So the Heat are thirty five and twenty and the seven sixes are thirty five and twenty. So how many games back are they from that spot? From the four spot? Four right. spot? Mm-hmm. I mean, they technically oh, just, just all half game. game. Okay, and there was a three seed that I was looking at that they were four games back. Yeah, okay, now, I apologize seed. for that. But basically, unless they're able to finagle their way up to that four seed, they're a terrible road team. Now, I wish I had understood exactly what their record was, but it's very much below 500. And they're going to have to play every series that they see on the road if they were to get that far. So it doesn't instill me with a lot of confidence. It don't either. And, like, I made a point last week talking about the 76ers and, like, just their style of play and what they need to do in order to become a better team and to become, like, championship contenders. Like, we all thought they would be. Like, I remember going to the season, many, including myself, was like, well, they might come out to East because I didn't think the Giannis and the Bucks was going to be as dominant still because they lost Brogdon. Mm-hmm. Um, who else did they lose this past season? They like, lost um, – I, I, I think it was the only key player they lost. And Brogdon was a, a crucial point. He, he, he was the biggest guy. I mean, they lost like you know some pieces like oh, DJ Wilson. You know, now DJ Wilson's still on the team. Or is it? Oh no, no. Oh, he's still on the team. So they yeah, kept they the kept team. most of their players, but Ma- Malcolm Brogdon, who had a terrific season last year, going 50, 40, 90 club. Mm-hmm. He was the first person doing. He's assists. been balling in Indiana too. Yeah, as, as a point guard, actually, he's been playing really well for us. And we thought that they going to have a significant drop because of that, because he was such a crucial piece of that team. But they mm-hmm. Taking the league by storm. They picked up Wesley Matthews from us, from uh, Indiana. They signed Robin Lopez. Mm. And they've been playing. They just signed, um, what's his name, from uh, from uh, New Orleans. Oh, Marvin Williams. Not, uh, Marvin yes, Williams. Marvin Williams. Really Charlotte, good, pick that was a good pickup. It was a good pickup. And they got, uh, I wouldn't say I wouldn't say a cavalcade, but they have a bunch of like bigs who can not only defend and be the trees that they have inside the paint to go along with Giannis, mm. but they can also shoot. Like, Which is good because you need to run a four-out offense for Giannis to spread the paint. Yeah, and Giannis is shooting t- t- significantly better this year as well. So that, that helps the team grow as a team. And he's only playing 31 minutes a game, and he's averaging 13, what, 15 rebounds and like six assists a game? And he's averaging like 31, 13, and six right now. Yeah. Which is why I get it because Coach of the Year is a is an award that's usually given out for the overachiever. But I still feel like Budenholzer deserves some love in that. Like everybody's talking about Spolstra or Nick Nurse or whatnot. But I think Budenholzer deserves some love. I think, yeah, because who won it last year? It was uh, – I think it was Budenholzer that won last year. Yeah, they had the best record last year. Yeah, and usually you don't get it twice in a row for having the best record because it usually goes to the overachiever. But at the same time, in my opinion, they are overachieving. Like Even though they were a good team, they're on pace to win 70 games right now. They are. Giannis is by far the runaway MVP candidate. So, but anyway. Back, so back to the 76ers. So I pulled it up here. On the road – they are nine and nineteen, and I was right. So they did play at home yesterday. So now they improved mm. to twenty six and two. Mm. But they are nine and nineteen on the road. And going back to what you said, if with them being the current seed of the fifth seed right now in the East, they don't have their home court advantage because they would, like I said, they would face the Heat, and I could see them losing that game. I will take Heat and six. And Heat been playing. Real, I think the Heat actually had the second best home record in the league. I, cause last time I checked, they was one of the best teams at home. 
So they actually have a good home record at, as well. And facing a team like the Heat, who have great shooters on a team like a Duncan Robinson, like a Kendrick Nunn, like a Tyler Harrow, like these and Jimmy Butler himself, like they have good shooters on that team. They also added Jay Crowder. I wouldn't. Mm-hmm. I mean, Eagle Dollar, would you count him as like a good shooter? He's a good playmaker and defender. I'd say he's he's just he's smart. He he picks his spots. Yeah, I wouldn't say he's a knockdown shooter, but I wouldn't leave him open either. Uh, Max Kellerman thinks he's the best shooter in the clutch. <laughs> it was Max. <laughs> High leverage moments. High leverage moments. <laughs> Anyway. But I'm I don't know where we, like like I was talking to some people uh, about go, talking about last week's show like let me ask you what do you think the 76ers need to do to improve their team so they can get to that actual championship contending level that they inspired to be so a lot of people would say they need to trade either Ben Simmons or Joel Embiid and I also agree that I feel like that tandem on paper looks really good but it's just two things that are really good. But don't fit together. I'm I'm still in this from Shannon Sharp. But he's talking about. Do you like mashed potatoes? I do. Do you like ice cream? I do. Do I, you like them together? Fuck no. Exactly. Oh. So they're. Shoot. All right, ooh, <laughs> cut the tape. <laughs> we'll go ahead. But 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 it just it it's true because in the day you can have two really good things, but when you put them together, they don't work. Right. But I think their biggest problem, and even if they were to trade. Ben Simmons or Trey Joel Embiid, this is something that would still be an issue. They just don't have any shooting. Like the only real knockdown shooter they have is Quentin Richardson, and I don't even think. I mean, Josh Richardson. Or Josh, I always say Quentin. Richardson. They got Court Miles. Court Miles is a good shooter. They picked he, up. Yeah, got, Court Miles too, and then they picked up um, Alec Burks. They yeah, Alec Burks, and he's decent because he, he play. He's been playing pretty good for the state. They got Round Nito from uh, Utah. But, I mean, would you count him as a good shooter? I, I mean, so. but he's how many minutes he's really going to play? Going, he and started, he started like, last game. Like in terms of like real rotation guys who Glenn are going to do I'm just giving so, you like, that. These are these are names. These are names. <laughs> but like some real knock, some real knockdown guys. Because, you know, I think it was the worst decision they ever made to let JJ, JJ go. Yes, yeah. That was just a terrible decision. For one, he was a veteran. He was a mature winner. And that's something that I feel like that locker room needs. It's why they signed Al Horford. They and apparently he's much, not – Way too much money. Way too much money. But they just need shooters. Because at the end of the day, Ben Simmons can't shoot, and he's going to need you to space the floor. Like, if you build around Ben Simmons the same way you did around Giannis, where you just let him go downhill with a whole bunch of shooters around him, I think they would be phenomenal. Or if you just had Joel Embiid, where you played an inside-out kind of a game, where you build around him and people can't come off because you got four shooters around him, they would be great in either aspect. But regardless of if they trade one of them with no shooting, neither one of them really be able to play at their best. Now, I... I'm against trading either one of them because there's su- there's such great talents and they're so young. I think here's what I think, and many have talked about this before. I think at this point it's up to Brett Brown. I think it's up to him to figure it out because when you have two great talents like this, I can see and like I pointed out before, they do have conflicting playing styles, but there is a way you can get them two to play together. There is a way, and you ha- and somebody's gonna have to. Like get inside Ben Simmons' head, cause we seen him over the summer, like shoot threes and take plenty of threes. Like he would post videos of him shooting threes, but during the NBA season we do not see him shoot. Threes. Yeah, I'm sorry, but Ben Simmons. At the end of the day, you are a professional basketball player getting paid millions of dollars, and you're afraid to shoot threes. I know people in the little league that be chucking with no remorse, and they, and it's just like, dude, just shoot. You're you're learning. At the end of the day, nobody's gonna get mad at you for putting up bricks. Russell Westbrook's been throwing up bricks for years, <laughs> and he's still getting max contracts. You will be okay, Ben. I, I promise you will be o- you I will be just fine. I, I mean, I can't really speak and, like, tell him to get out of his, like, comfort zone, like, because I don't know what's going through him psychologically as a player. Like, what's he thinking and why is he not He traumatized by threes? Like, did, did threes do something to him in his childhood that made him never want to put one up? I don't I don't know what it is. Like, Then he needs to start chucking. He does. We seen him take that shot in the preseason. I think he took one in the actual season uh, as well. No, he's made two in the season. It's just I don't know. And there's been like there have been times where uh, Joel and B made references of, like the team need and shooting people are thinking that he was calling out Ben Simmons because of that. He called spade a spade. It's simple. But, what else would he be talking about? He ain't talking about Alec. He ain't. He ain't I, talking about Al Horford. But I mean, like I said, I, there is a way they they can play. I think there's a way that can coexist with each other. I think it's up to Brett Brown. But let's say they do. Let's say they say a fifth seed. Like the playoffs start right now. They do play the Heat. They get bounced in the first round. They not trading Joel and Ben Simmons. Elton Brand's not doing that. Brett Brown gotta go because at this point, look at it. At this point, they've been to the playoffs with this newfound team three times. 
And they made it to the semis last year. Lost to Kawhi Leonard off that a bouncing shot. With Jimmy Butler, though. With Jimmy, that's when they had Jimmy Butler, which I like. I think that was a bad decision to let him walk. That was a good addition 100%. to that team. The year before, they lost to the Celtics. <clears throat> in, in five games. And That was the semis, too, wasn't it? Yeah, there was a semis. Yeah, cause they, cause and they got like, absolutely blasted. There was a game Ben Simmons had one point. Yeah, because cause the Celtics played the uh, Bucks in the first round that year, and they ended up playing LeBron in the Cavs uh, in yes. the finals, Eastern Conference finals. So you've been to the playoffs three times. It went out pretty bad. Well, I get last year you didn't go out bad, but that was a completely different team. You had Jimmy Butler, JJ Redick, and all that. So that doesn't really count. That's an anomaly because that team is just completely different than the one you have now. So the year that you had a team pretty similar to what you have right now, where you have the core of Ben Simmons and Joel Embiid, you lose in five handily to the Celtics. And then uh, I believe the year before that, they lost. Who was the 76ers? Yeah. They lost to the. They lost. Are oh, you talking about before yeah, the I'm Celtics? About, well, I'm talking about before the Celtics. They, so wasn't I'm talking, even, they wasn't even in the playoffs. They wasn't, even, they wasn't even in the playoffs that year. So the way I see it, with the roster that you have constructed now, basically, you lost the Celtics in five. And you're getting worse. In terms of we're just looking at record if we're looking at individual statistics. They lost it they lost their seventy five in twenty eighteen. And they lost to the Raptors in seven or six. It was seven, wasn't it? No, it was six. And it was seven. It was seven. It was seven because that was the first uh walk off game winner at the buzzer for a game seven ever. It was. So it was they but, lost to the Raptors in seven in twenty nineteen. They it's looking like they might lose to the heat in twenty twenty. Basically. So in my opinion, and here's my thing too, you're gonna get a haul. Like you're acting like you're losing a star and you're not gonna get anything in return. Like would you get somebody? Because I guess what do you what would you consider Joel and be top fifteen in the NBA? Uh I'd say top fifteen, top, he is top, top 15. twelve, top, top ten. Top most likely, yeah, top ten, top fifteen. Like top okay. So for a top ten, top fifteen talent, you could get a lot. You can you can get a, a lot of shooters. You can get some draft picks more than likely. So in my opinion me personally, so you I'd rather see, have Ben you Simmons. On the side, you on the side of Ben Simmons. I'm on the side of trading Joel Embiid. I feel like this is a guard heavy league. I feel like a guy like Giannis, who is a ball dominant, ball, a uh, ball handling, big with ball handling skills, who can go downhill, who can pass, who can rebound, who can defend, perimeter and interiorly, surrounding them with shooters will go will bowl well, versus. Building around a center. Not to mention Joel Embiid is injury prone. He has injury problem. Ben Simmons always plays. He don't shoot when he plays, but at least he plays. 